right, so the next thing I'm going to do here real quick is just take a real quick look at uh, cardiac, uh, blood supply to cardiac muscle and what's going on there. Uh, again, I'm not expecting to know all the blood vessels to the heart and all the supply there, but understanding a basic kind of take of what we're going to be seeing in terms of blood supply to the heart is kind of a key thing here. So the heart is definitely too thick, and if we were to actually be able to dissect these in person, you would see the heart is definitely too thick to have really the blood from in the chamber supply the rest of the heart. So in order to do this, we actually need coronary circulation. If we were to look at the aorta, right behind the aortic valve, there's actually two little holes, one on each side, and those are becoming really what are going to be your left and right coronary arteries. So really the shortest trip on the systemic circuit is actually going to be this coronary circulation. And this is the basic supply here. And if you know this table, to me, this is sufficient for what you need to know. So you have the aorta that goes to left and right coronary arteries. Uh, you have the marginal versus the circumflex on the left side. And then you have the ones that are going down the backside between the ventricles and the front side between the ventricles. So you have that posterior interventricular artery, the anterior interventricular artery, and you can see that those are really supplying blood mainly to the ventricle walls in these ones, and then the marginal and the circumflex are doing both the walls of the atrium and the ventricle. This is then going to all feed back into cardiac veins, which get into the main coronary sinus, which is running along the posterior side of the heart, and then again it's going to open up through that coronary sinus into the right atrium. Uh, and again, what this is doing is making sure the blood is getting to the heart, that oxygenated blood to the heart. And again, we need good blood supply to this because it, the heart is definitely too thick for it to actually just uh, diffuse through the heart wall. So like I said, there's left and right coronary arteries, again, right above the semilunar valve, the aortic semilunar valve. So it actually goes in there. The, when the valve is open, no blood is going into the coronary circulation. It's when the valve actually closes, that blood will drop in and goes into this coronary circulation. And you can see examples of both these left and right coronary arteries on this image right here. You can see them lit up in red. Those are then going to branch, and the right one goes to the right marginal artery and the posterior interventricular artery. So you can see each of those on here. Go on the interior side right here, and then you see the marginal on that one. And you can see how on the back side it's getting down and going to the back side of those atria. So the left side, the coronary branches, you can see the same thing. Interior side of the heart in this case, and really just take a look at these ones and you can see where they're at. Uh, and you can see the main left coronary artery going along there and going to those branches. So again, the left coronary artery branches, the main one is going to be the circumflex artery. So this is supplying both the left atrium and the ventricle, where you have the front side of the heart now getting that inner ventricular artery, which is going to supply blood to both the ventricles a little bit. This tends to be the one that is kind of the most key in that if there is a blockage in this one, it is the one that is most likely to be fatal because it is supplying such a big portion of especially the left ventricle. So a lot of times they talk about any type of blockage or a heart attack due to a blockage in the anterior interventricular artery as being a widow maker, uh, mainly because the risk of death on that one is usually quite high. And you can see it best on this one. And to me, this is the one I would kind of look at to kind of see stuff here. So you can see the left and right coming out here, main right coronary artery, and then some of the main branches of this we can see that posterior interventricular on the back side right there, where you can see the circumflex going this direction and the interior one going here. And you can see how that one's supplying a lot of the wall of the left ventricle here, which is again why it is considered to be that widow maker. And you can see the marginal artery coming out to the front side here a little bit. What we're going to see on these is there's definitely arterial anastomosis. So an anastomosis is 
really in an artery, it's a branch point that allows blood to get to areas in multiple ways. So you might have a main artery going here and then you get a branch going off and there's blood supply coming from both of these arteries that are coming out in between. Uh, these end arteries don't have anastomoses, but the main thing we see here is this is multiple ways to get blood to the same area. So this is kind of showing you coronary and artery anastomosis. You can see two main blood vessels going here, and you can kind of see that there's a lot of branching in between these ones. And what this really means, if there was somehow a blockage in one of these ones, there's still blood getting to most of that tissue, which again, an anastomosis to me is a way to ensure that blood flow is going to get somewhere where if you only had one artery going in and there was somehow a blockage, then you're, there's no blood getting anywhere. And again, that like I was saying, that blood flow is intermittent because when blood ventricle is contracting, those aortic valve flaps are up and there's no blood going into this. So, And also when the heart is contracting, it will compress those vessels. So we really need the blood coming to the heart when it's in relaxation. So what we see is this contracts, pumps that blood out, and as it goes back into relaxation, that blood drops down and goes into those coronary arteries. And that's when blood flow is gonna get there. So every time the heart beats, it's gonna temporarily stop blood flow to this because it compresses those arteries each time. This pump, blood that gets pumped through all this tissue and sooner or later it's gonna make its way back to this cardiac veins. So you have this great cardiac vein that is kind of moving in that sulcus that goes around the heart. And it is gonna, you can see the main ones that are, they're kind of going in the same sulcuses up at the front here. And again, I'm not so worried that you know all these ones, but what you're going to see is sooner or later, this is going to work to the back side of the heart and you, we don't have it lit up here yet, but this is going to be that main blood vessel on the back of the heart that is going to sooner or later empty back into that right atrium. So these different cardiac veins travel into one another. Sooner or later, all this is going to dump back into the coronary sinus. And this is that big kind of distended vein that is on the back side of the heart in that sulcus between the atria and the ventricles. And this is gonna have the opening in it that's gonna drain into that right atrium. And you can kind of see that, again, it still hasn't been lit up on these pictures yet, but it is this structure right here. So you can see that coronary sinus right here. Everything is gonna flow back to that. And it's really from that back into the right atrium that completes that coronary circulation pattern. And to me, knowing, like I said, that flow chart is what I really kind of expect. I'm not going to ask you about the small cardiac vein, the great cardiac vein, the middle cardiac vein, and all these ones. But you need to know that it's going to go through the left and right to those four branches that we talked about back into coronary veins. And sooner or later, it's going to make its way back to that coronary sinus and through an opening back into the right atrium. Uh, again, sometimes we can have issues with this. Uh, cardiovascular disease sometimes, especially in athletes, sometimes you get this cardiac, severe, like sudden cardiac death. Uh, a lot of times it's some coronary artery anomaly, leads to a large enlarging of the heart, increase in thickness of the heart, and at some point, a lot of times be under stress, you get dizzy or have a shortness of breath, and then, like I said, sometimes it just happens where these you hear about these stories every once in a while. Some teenager collapses on a football field, collapses on the basketball court, and it is a lot of times this sudden cardiac death that you can see a lot of times, like I said, due to some type of congenital defect that really isn't diagnosed. Uh, again, atherosclerosis is that hardening and thickening of the arteries in there. Uh, this can be an issue if it gets too much of a blockage. Uh, especially if there's any narrowing of those vessels, like a coronary spasm. And that angina pectoralis is that idea of chest pain a lot of times that you'll see if your heart is having some issues, you'll feel this kind of chest pain because of, it's really a referred pain, but usually from strenuous activity will give you that angina. Uh, and again, a myocardial infarction is if there is some type of blockage in these coronary arteries, the tissue that dies is what that infarction is, or is damaged, and this is a type of heart attack. So myocardial infarction is a type of heart attack where if you're getting no blood flow to this tissue, this tissue starts undergoing damage and death, and again, if it's too much, it can be uh, deadly. 
So again, if something like this was blocked off, you're reducing blood flow all the way down here, that could be an issue. Atherosclerosis, if you just want to see what it looks like, this is showing you a normal blood vessel. This is one with a plaque formed in it. And you see all that's left is this little lumen on the bottom. A lot of times these atherosclerosis, these plaques will form at branch points. And again, they just treat it in a couple different ways. One of the ways to treat these is to do what is a coronary bypass. And what this is really doing is it's making an entirely new pathway. They usually harvest a piece of vein. Unlike as shown on the image here, they do put this back together. There is a little bit of stretch in those veins. You can take a little piece out, harvest it, put the rest of the vein back together. But what they'll do then is they'll go up and graft this onto that ascending aorta and bypass the area where there is the blockage. Uh, that would be a single bypass you see there. If you talk about a double or triple or quadruple bypass, that is how many of these grafts they're putting on to get past blockages. Obviously, more bypasses means bigger heart issues. The other thing they can do sometimes is this angioplasty where they will go up through your artery, feed a, really a little line up to the heart and have this little inflatable balloon. I actually have one in my office. Uh, that you could see it, this teeny tiny little boom, but they can go in there and they can actually open this up to an area that has been narrowed to open it up to provide a little bit more opening there. A lot of times they'll do this with a stent attached. And the reason for this is, is it's kind of like when you're digging underground, a lot of times you want to put some type of scaffolding in there to make sure nothing will collapse. It's really a similar idea here. Uh, if you inflate one of these balloons sometimes you can take away some of this and stuff will detach and it can clog up stuff there by placing that stent it keeps the structure open uh, again nowadays some of these are going to be they used to be metal stuff would gum up on those a little bit more now they're a lot of times are drug treated type of plastic that is releasing substances that will inhibit plaque formation in that area so this Kind of concludes that part. The last thing we're going to talk about on the last uh, of these hard episodes is going to be about cardiac output. This is going to lead into some of what we're going to talk about in the vessels chapter when we're dealing with blood pressure. So to me, this is one of those things that we will talk about it here. You'll get tested on it a little bit with the heart stuff, but we're also going to have pieces of this that will continue on and that you'll get hit again with when we go and talk about the idea of... Uh, what's going on with blood pressure regulation because one of the things we'll see cardiac output is a big part of that blood pressure regulation. So I will see you next time.